When discussing space travel in the modern age, everyone goes to one thing, rockets. And to be fair, I can't blame you. Every successful space program that's been around has used rockets, be it American, European, Soviet, and now even Chinese, with big names such as the Apollo program and Starship attached to them. But is it the only way? Today, we're gonna to go ahead and check out a program funded by the United States and the Canadian governments during the 1960s of a different way to get up into space. Hey guys, Bill here with Homemade Simple, and today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at a pretty unique piece of technology that's been largely forgotten over time, and that is going to be this behind me. Before we get into that, I do just have a quick announcement to make, and that is my Wednesday video uploads are going to stop as of right now, and that is simply because I can't keep this schedule with my workload as I'm doing YouTube as a side project. It's not my main job. I'm not getting any income from this. I do enjoy it, but unfortunately, I can't justify devoting uh, three videos a week anymore. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to cancel the Wednesday videos. But let's get back to the video I am doing today, which is on the idea of Project HARP or the High Altitude Research Project. So HARP is kind of a really weird idea where instead of using a rocket to get in the space, you use a gun. Yes, I'm aware this sounds like something a third grader come up with, but there actually is a lot of merits to using a gun to just shoot something up in the space. And that is, it's a lot cheaper. You don't have to go ahead and build these massive support structures being the rockets themselves and then throwing them out every single time. It's part of the reason Elon Musk is building those reusable rockets. But technically speaking, this type of launch system would be even cheaper. As you're just using one cannon to launch something into space, there's not a whole lot of infrastructure support needed. There's not a whole lot of essentially repairs needed overall. And you don't need to build a brand new system every time you use it. Even with SpaceX's systems, there is a bit of rebuild that they need to do on these rockets to refurbish them. So who decided to go ahead and get this project off the ground? While most people are immediately going to go ahead and say, well, a project this crazy has to be an American idea. And it wasn't actually. This was a Canadian idea. Yeah, our neighbors to the north came up with this one. Canada wanted to go ahead and compete with the United States and the Soviet Union to build something that was able to launch satellites and launch stuff in the space in general at a low cost. America saw this and went, big guns are kind of our thing, so we want in. So it was a joint American and Canadian project with the United States Army, a Canadian university, and the Canadian government all funding the project. The project was given three years to develop a space gun to launch satellites into orbit. They needed a place to do this though, and as Cape Canaveral was kind of a little occupied with the regular rocket stuff, and the United States wasn't willing to kind of fork over territory, it was kind of left over to Canada to figure things out. Canada doesn't really have a great position to launch stuff in space, so they reached out to another nation, Barbados. Barbados is a tiny Caribbean island furthest east out of all of the islands in the Caribbean. They were all for this because they just got their independence from Britain. They wanted to go ahead and develop an economy and having a space gun launch stuff off their island seemed like a great way to bolster their new economy that needed a way to get out of its poverty levels. So with the approval of the government, the United States and Canada began developing the HARP system. And at first it was a single 16 inch naval gun, similar to what we have in the Iowa class battleship. And they started testing, seeing how far this thing could launch at an upward angle. It turned out that this wasn't enough. They needed to increase the barrel length. And at this point, a lot of you are saying, oh, so they built a new gun. No, they kind of once again went with the third grade approach of let's go ahead and staple another existing 16 inch gun onto that 16 inch gun. So they just welded together two of the biggest naval guns ever made to make one massive gun. This is where the US Army got a little less interested because at this point, the gun wasn't actually usable on the battlefield. It just simply was too big, but they still kept funding it as an alternate way to reach space. This gun would absolutely be revolutionary for the time, and it would actually do a lot of high altitude studies. How high? It got up to 110 miles into the atmosphere. Yeah, that high. Absolutely crazy that it reached that height and it developed all sorts of new Sabo-based technologies. For those of you unaware of what that is, that is basically where you have a rocket fired from a gun. 
it kind of started leading the charge on that, and it also went ahead and revolutionized a lot of gunnery technologies and practices. Now the one extra thing I want to talk about before moving on is the fact of how powerful this gun was. This gun could be felt across the entire island of Barbados. Felt. It would shake the island, you could see mushroom clouds every time the gun fired. It was a sight to behold. And that is because it is the single largest gunpowder based explosion ever because of the amount of gunpowder that was used in this system. So while the system overall was very successful for the amount of time it was had, remember they only had three years to do this. And due to governmental infighting, the success of many rocket programs of the United States, and the disinterest of the Canadian government and universities, the project started falling on the wayside. It fired its last shot in 1967 and would be canned after that, ending the idea of the HARP program. While the gun never went ahead and achieved its goals, it did make the idea of other means of space travel besides rockets a reality. And today, it is still on the island of Barbados, and you can still go ahead and check it out at its site. It's kind of a local tourist destination if you can get permissions and access. The last thing that I want to go ahead and mention is actually, while the HARP system is gone, there's some new players in the field of other than rocket technologies. What I mean by this is there's people trying to make new space guns. The first one is known as the SHARP project. And basically you take HARP, add the word super to it, congrats, you have SHARP. And instead of putting a big gun together, they basically have two tubes stuck together, one loaded with explosives and the other loaded with a payload and launched it into orbit. Another type of technology using kind of the ideas of HARP is a spin drum where you basically spin an object inside a drum at such high velocities that it's able to reach orbital velocities. There are a couple problems with this and it's the ultimate reason why this system was abandoned. First off, you can't launch people out of it. So anything crewed off the table, moon missions, Mars missions, all of them, you can't launch people. Additionally, the satellites that they could launch were really small and at that time they didn't have the technology to make the micro satellites we have today. But our new technologies could go ahead and allow this system to have a second chance at life. While the HARP system itself will unfortunately fade away over time and eventually be forgotten, its successor systems might go ahead and give rocketry a run for its money. We'll see in the coming years if any of these new systems can actually challenge the supremacy of rockets in the field of space exploration. But for the time being, the idea of using a gun to get into space is going to remain, unfortunately, out of reach. So that's all I got for you guys today. Tune in this Friday for our second part of our Taiwan series. So with that being said, take it easy.